راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور ادواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسنة الغراء شارحة له فهما لنا من ربنا وحيان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Praise be to Allah alone. And may the greatest peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. My dear students, welcome back with another hadith, hadith number 17 in the first level of the prophetic tradition. The hadith is narrated by Anas ibn Malik. May Allah be pleased with him, whom we spoke about his biography uh, before. He said that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, There are three qualities. Whoever attains them will find the sweetness of faith. The first one is when Allah and His Messenger become dearer to Him than anything else and all else. The second quality is when He loves a person and He doesn't love him except for the sake of Allah. And the third quality is whenever he hates to return to disbelief as much as he hates to be thrown in hellfire. Hating to return to disbelief after Allah has saved him from it as much as he hates to be thrown in hellfire. And this hadith is agreed upon its authenticity. So Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu an, one of the great companions of the Prophet sallallahu and was the last of the companion Sudai in Al-Basra on the year 97. May Allah be pleased with him. And we know that he have served the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, for 10 years. And he enjoyed his company until he died and he benefited a great deal. And eventually he benefited the Ummah at large by narrating and sharing with us many a hadith that um, um, most likely only a person like him will put his hand on because he was so close to the Prophet Sallallahu he used to enter his houses, accompany him here and there, and so on. And the Prophet Sallallahu prayed for his barakah in his wealth and his life span. Some of the phrases which may require elaboration, such as when the Prophet Sallallahu says, he will find the sweetness of faith. Whoever will possess the three qualities which we talked about, will find the sweetness of faith. Uh, does faith have sweetness? Of course. You know, similar to the body which requires food and drink to nurture and grow the body, the soul, likewise, the food of the spirit is the love of Allah and His Messenger, the deen, the religion, faith and belief. So it means his heart will be open to faith and will find great deal of pleasure in doing the different acts of worship. So he enjoys the prayers. He looks forward for the next prayer to offer. He gets up at night, by the way, he or she. A believer who finds the sweetness of faith will find it easy to fulfill what Allah has commanded and he even is offering more super irrigatory acts of worship. And uh, it will not burden him to to abstain from what is forbidden or to stay away even from what is merely disliked and not, not recommended. And then also when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says uh, in the second quality when you love somebody, you love him exclusively for the sake of Allah. And that means you have no worldly interest and aim in this relationship. So sometimes you didn't even meet physically. I heard about this person in India. Sheikh Safiyyur Rahman Mubarakafuri, may Allah have mercy on him. Oh, he's the author of al Rahiqul Maktoum, such a beautiful book. I love him for the sake of Allah. What made me love somebody whom I did not meet? His qualities. 
And also when I meet somebody physically and we become friends and we become together and we go to the masjid, we help those who are in need, we help each other to be righteous and to remain steadfast on the straight path. These are the qualities which makes me like this person. I love him or her for the sake of Allah. Okay. Let's uh, delve deeper into the three beautiful characteristics that the Prophet Sallallahu said that these three qualities or characteristics, whoever will possess them, whoever will attain them, will find the sweetness and the pleasure of Iman. MashaAllah. With the first one, what does it mean to have Allah and His Messenger dearer to your heart than anyone else, than anything else? Mahabba or love means uh, to strictly follow those whom you love and make sure that you do not do anything that displeases him or them. Rather, every aspect in your life is revolving around making sure that they love it and they love you. Not only that you claim I love them, but you give precedence to your desire over the love of Allah and His Messenger. Or to give precedence to any of Allah's creations, whether a human being or worldly gains or... So you offer the job. Where? Conventional bank. Oh, too bad. Oh, but the salary is very high. It is five times the salary if you work in an Islamic bank or work in another firm or a company. Very, very tempting salary. Not a chance. I don't even think about it. No temptation will make me do anything that Allah and His Messenger, peace be upon Him, hate, disapprove, dislike, or ordered us to abstain from. That is the meaning of loving Allah. Ibn Qudama, may Allah have mercy on him, said, whoever loves Allah will not disobey him. What is meant is that perfect love of Allah prevents one from committing sins. And if they were to sin, they quickly return to Allah with sincere repentance. And then they will be attaining Allah's love. Since Allah the Almighty said in Surah Al-Baqarah, Indeed Allah loves at those who frequently repent. So they do not persist nor insist in committing the sin because they love Allah. Sometimes we feel weak, we indulge into sin, we slip off the straight path, get back on track right away. That's a sign of loving Allah and His Messenger, peace be upon Him. As for the second quality, which is when you love somebody, you only love him or her for the sake of Allah. You know that there is a beautiful um, hadith in which the Prophet said, The strongest bond of Islam and Iman is to love somebody when you love him or her for the sake of Allah. And when you decide to stay away from somebody also for the sake of Allah. So what made you, you know, establish a good relationship with this person? Because of his or her qualities. Because they are God obedient. They are obedient to Allah. They are righteous because of that. I love them because Allah loves them. I love whomever Allah loves. I love whomever the messenger of Allah loves. Not because he is giving me financial help or he is in a good position where he facilitates for me things. You know, these are all worldly means. It doesn't count here. It happens. Obviously, naturally, we are inclined towards loving those who help us and assist us. But we're talking about the three qualities which will make you find and taste the sweetness of faith in your heart, not in your stomach. So when you love somebody, when you befriend somebody, when you become allies of somebody, it is for the sake of Allah. This is kind of uh, scary as well because some people do love singers, uh, dancers, musicians uh, and guess what they say I'm a big fan of you you're my idol unfortunately that has become very common you see that clearly on the social media 
In the past, people used to conceal that because it wasn't published. But now, people may write a comment. They say to a singer, a dancer, even the opposite gender. So you find a man says, I love this uh, female singer to death. This person have lost the compass. He doesn't know what faith is. And a person who says, I love this person, despite the fact that the Allah the Almighty and his messenger do not like them, and they are declaring their sins in public, that means you do not really like Allah and his messenger. You do not love them. You love your desire. Your inner desire is taking precedence. Okay? Loving somebody for the sake of Allah requires help and support. The concept of wala and bara. I support all my Muslim brothers and sisters. I help them physically, morally, financially, spiritually, and I make dua for them all the time. In my prayer I say, Rabbi ghfirli wa li walidayya wa lil mu'mineen. Forgive me and my parents and all the believers all over the earth, those whom I know and those whom I do not know. And with the third characteristic, which is uh, to hate, to be, uh, uh, to return to disbelief as much as you hate to be thrown in hellfire. In other words, his heart is filled with the joy of faith. He doesn't have a shred of a doubt that this is the ultimate truth. He understands what Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, in the and Allah al Islam. There is only one religion. He doesn't believe that there are multiple religions and we all worship the same God. We Christians, Jews and others worship the same God and eventually uh, all of us will end up in heaven. But you know, we're driving in different vehicles but on the same highway. Absolutely not true. And whoever believes so, not only that he doesn't uh, love Allah and his messenger and he doesn't love the deen, he's out of the fold of Islam because he is belying the Almighty Allah and his word in the Quran. Islam is the only religion that is accepted and approved by Allah. And that makes a person enthusiastic to give da'wah, to tell others, to inform everyone. Sometimes a person reverts and his parents, his siblings are still non-Muslims. So when he is certain that that is the ultimate truth and this is the only religion that Allah approves, he wants to invite them to Islam and he wants to see them becoming believers and monotheistic right away. And wherever he goes, in the plane, in the flight, in the train, at the airport, at the school, if he's a patient, if he's a doctor, he's given da'wah wherever he or she goes. Why? Because they recognize that this is the ultimate truth. So, and mere thinking about going back to this belief after Allah has saved you uh, is impossible. It is simply like, you know, throwing yourself in hellfire. Would anyone like to be thrown in hellfire? No. Accordingly, no believer who has tasted the sweetness of Iman, who loved Allah and his messenger more than anything else, would even think about abandoning his or her religion or considering any other religion. So, <clears throat> faith is the sustenance and the nourishment for the heart, just as food and drink are sustenance and nourishment for the body. If the person is sick, no matter what kind of food you put in front of him or her, they cannot develop a taste to it. I can eat. I don't want to drink. But if they're healthy, oh, I enjoy this kind of food and the barbecue and the T-bone steak or the seafood because you're healthy. You can taste the food. You can enjoy it. Likewise, when one's heart is sick and is not fully saturated with faith, sometimes a person will be praying and not enjoying his prayer. The meal is there. The nourishment is there. The food for the heart is there. But he cannot taste it. The reminder, the Quran, the Hadith, the Khutbah, the Tahajjud prayer, nothing is affecting. Rather, his heart is inclined towards singing and singing and music and dancing and all of that. You know, now you know what is missing. And you know that you cannot taste 
the sweetness of faith because you have barriers between you and tasting that. You need to remove them from your past and then you need to work on developing and emphasizing the three qualities. To have Allah and his messenger dearer to you than anything else. Whenever you love people, you love them for the sake of Allah and only for the sake of Allah. And you love Islam and you believe that there is the only accepted religion by Allah to the extent that mere thinking about leaving Islam after Allah has saved you uh, is like throwing yourself in hellfire. May Allah keep us all steadfast on his straight path. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. Till next time, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي. أكاديمية زاد. زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسنة الغراء شارحة له فهما لنا من ربنا وحيان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان